Good morning and welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I am Pastor Dave. With me are uh, Donna Schiffer on the organ and piano, Vicki Bowers on vocals, David Cohen on guitar and vocals, and Isaac Duquette is our producer. We have a couple of announcements. This is Graduate Sunday, and so we are honoring our graduates as we can in this virtual reality. Uh, also, we want to uh, note the uh, White Rose on the communion table is in honor of Masako Clemens, uh, who passed away this week. And we again send out our condolences to her daughter, Joanne, and all the family. And uh, we had a very nice service Friday that was streamed globally, so Masako's family in Japan could hopefully be a part of that, and David was a part of that. Uh, also, uh, we're asked to pray for Ron Chaluka, Amanda Chaluka Sauer's uh, father. He is starting uh, chemo on Friday. And I ask you to continue to pray for my mother-in-law, Isaac's grandmother, Linda, as she starts her chemo tomorrow. And so we have a lot, a lot going on uh, in our church community and certainly a lot going on in the world to be praying for and lifting up to God. So it is our hope that this service of worship will provide me uh, inspiration and hope. With that, let us begin to worship God with our prayer. Oh, Lord, we praise you. 
every wicked bird of every kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. There was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. There was evening, there was morning. The sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and bolt. Oh. 
Our song for today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants you have found the bulwark because of your foes, the silence, the enemy, and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God. You have crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And from the Gospel of Matthew, This is chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, and for the next three weeks, we'll be exploring the Great Commission and what it means for us today. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always, to the end of the age. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, for the gift of your word read, we give you thanks. And now as your word is proclaimed, we pray that Insofar as what is said is true, you would write it on our hearts and give us the grace to believe. And insofar as it is false, may it fall to the ground, soon be forgotten, and do no harm. Amen. Today is Graduate Sunday in the life of Pensai Presbyterian Church, Trinity Sunday in the life of the Christian Church. Normally, we would call our graduates forward. We would present them with something. We would enjoy cake and refreshments in their honor. There would be pats on the back, congratulations, and we would all look forward to what's next. Normally, I would attempt to speak to the mystery of God and three persons, blessed Trinity, in a way that was both doctrinally sound, somewhat relevant, and moderately intelligible, usually with mixed results. Normally, that's what we would do, but 2020 is not normal. High schools and universities try to do something, and we appreciate the effort, but as the parent of a 2020 graduate and soon to be in-law of another, a picture on my computer screen seemed very anticlimactic, like one more thing lost in the pandemic of 2020. So today, the doctrine of the Trinity cannot be some obscure church teaching that we all nod our heads to and then move on. We don't have the luxury in 2020 of ivory tower academic exercises that intrigue but do not engage. We've lost too much in these past few weeks. We have seen too much, too many black lives taken, too many examples of excessive force, too many cries, no justice, no peace. Class of 2020, what a world we are commencing you into. A world in need of healing hope, justice, and peace. A world that needs Christians to be Christian and the church to be the body of Christ. A world to which Jesus commissions his disciples then and now. Today, Jesus comes to us and he says to us, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded, and remember, I'm with you always, to the end of the age. Please notice that this is a universal, all-inclusive commission. All authority in heaven, and on, in heaven and on earth has been given to me, all. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, again, all. Current events demonstrate that Jesus' commission continues to be 
the cutting edge of social change. Jesus is speaking to his 11 disciples. He is speaking to 11 Jews. He is speaking to 11 men who all their lives have known and been trained that to be a Jew is to be separate, especially from the Gentiles. Because that's what God demands, first and foremost. That's what it means to be holy. And second, because Jews have been persecuted for their faith. If they do not keep to their way, no one will. Jesus rejects all of that. Jesus rejects any and all forms of discrimination and racism. In his kingdom, there is a place at the table for everyone. All are welcome. And we are commissioned to teach this way of Jesus and invite people into the kingdom and live this new way of being into reality. We are commissioned to welcome people in the name of God. This vision of the world is where the doctrine of the Trinity abandons the ivory tower, takes to the streets, and develops grassroots. Jesus commands us, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Normally, we focus on Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three persons of the Trinity. But as the class of 2020 knows all too well, this is not a normal time. This is an extraordinary time, and it is a time to be extraordinary. So focus today on the mighty three-letter word. We've had enough four-letter words. Focus on the mighty three-letter word. And Go and make disciples of all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What if the name of God is not the particular persons involved, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? What if the name of God is the and that unites them? What if the name of God is and? Then we have a model, a blueprint for the world God the Father created, God the Son redeemed, and God the Holy Spirit is powerfully present in to sustain. A world in which all are welcome, all are loved, all are cared for because all are cherished as children of God. What we are witnessing on the streets of our nation is both America at its best and America at its worst. The vision of equal justice for all is clashing with a system that treats blacks as less than whites. Andrew Fetter's column in Friday's Red Eagle said, about 1,200 Americans are killed by police annually, with blacks three times more likely than whites to die that way. Saturday's Red Eagle featured this report by the Associated Press about charges filed against an officer in Philadelphia for using excessive force. The article concluded with this description of what happened. A short time before a 6 p.m. curfew took effect Monday, police officers were, record were recorded by reporters, protesters, and observers lobbing smoke canisters, tear gas, and shooting projectiles later identified as beanbags and OC pellets, a type of rubber bullet, at the protesters who were clambering up a steep embankment and over the fence get off of the highway and try to escape the tear gas. Officers continued to fire even as the protesters retreated. A friend of my son Derek was at that protest and her Facebook post confirms that story. 76 years ago, 76 years to the date before this report was on the front page of the Red Eagle. We sent a generation of young men into a hail of Nazi bullets to save the world on Omaha Beach. Thanks to the courage and sacrifice on D-Day, the world was saved from Nazis. But the mission is not yet accomplished. There is still hate. Discrimination and racism persist. And in the name of God, we must say, I must say, you must say, black lives matter. Because black lives are the ones being taken. 
Black lives are the ones being hindered by systemic racism. Black lives are the ones where the promise that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For black lives, that promise has not been kept, and the bill is due. The promise has been kept for us white folks. Our lives are just fine. It looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel with coronavirus starting to relax for mellow yellow. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good. Black Lives Matter. I can't breathe. This is what is normal for our black brothers and sisters. This is the chasm that separates the black and white experience of America. Right now, Amazon is showing just mercy for free. I invite you and I encourage you to watch it. We need to start listening and learning and understanding what it means to be black in America. Because that normal that they know, that America that they endure, that is not the gospel. That is not good news. That is not the love of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. And the sin that we white folks must face up to and repent of is that we have ignored this. Something happens, there's a fuss, something gets done, and it's back to business as usual with racism still enmeshed in our systems and structures in society. Our silence makes us complicit. Because when we all come together, and we all demand that the system change so we do a better job of keeping the promise of America, then things change. And we do a better job of keeping the promise of America for all. The promise we bled for at Omaha Beach in 1944, and the promise we are bleeding for right now in cities across our nation right now. One of the church fathers, Tertullian, said, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. I hope and I pray that the blood being shed today will produce a harvest of righteousness in our land because the vision that is America goes a long way towards the vision of God's world where all God's children live together in peace. A friend of mine posted this on Facebook. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other farther apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of all. St. Francis of Assisi said, start doing what is necessary, then do what is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. The Lord is calling us to sacrificial love. A love when the currency of our words is backed by the gold of our lives. We have not yet reached this congruence. Jesus beckons, walk with me into a future that seems uncertain to you. It is not to me. I have a much larger pasture for you. Other sheep are waiting for you there. And I promise you, I will always be your shepherd. Trust me. Be not afraid. Class of 2020. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Pennside Presbyterian Church, go into the world in the name of God. Be silent no more. Let your voice be heard. Let the principalities and powers of our great nation know that you do not accept that some lives are of less value than others. You do not accept the routine use of excessive force. You do not accept it. You will not look away, and you will not be silent. You will say, Black lives matter until all lives matter. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in God's sight. Take that sacrificial love of God 
and go in the name of God. Amen. Our confession of faith comes from a brief statement of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the Word proclaimed, cleanses us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the Church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come now to our celebration of graduates, uh, we are delighted today to honor four graduates. We have a little piece of music. Love that song. Parents and graduates, isn't that a great tune? Pop the circumstance. So uh, we want to honor our four graduates. You'll see their pictures on your screen here. First, we want to uh, honor and celebrate uh, Robert Durr, who graduated from Antigua High School. Actually, I believe the grammatically proper way is to say that Robert was graduated from Antigua High School this week, and he'll be attending Kutztown. And so blessings, Robert, and congratulations. Next up is Isaac Duquette, who was graduated from Westchester University, and he will be going back to Westchester in the fall for his master's degree. So congratulations, Isaac. Uh, Alexis Harpin uh, graduated from Kutztown University. So congratulations, Alexis. And Jennifer Swist graduated from Kutztown University. Uh, and Alexis and Jennifer, I believe, are both going into education, so please hire them. So congratulations to Robert, Isaac, Alexis, and Jennifer, our graduates in 2020. This time now we have our offering, and again, I want to thank you for your continued uh, generosity that is allowing us to uh, continue this ministry, and I appreciate that very much. And also, again, if, if finances are tight, please know that this service and our church uh, is here for you, and this is our gift to you. So if you continue with that giving spirit, we have some more music from David Cohen. David.
more time of prayer. Again, I will lift up to you uh, Ron Chaluka, the father of Amanda, who uh, is beginning chemo on Friday. Uh, for Linda Kime, uh, my mother-in-law, Isaac's grandmother, who begins chemo tomorrow. And again, the family and friends of Masako Clemens, who passed away this week. Let us pray. Oh Lord, this is your world, and we come to you uh, this morning painfully aware that your world is in pain, and painfully aware, oh Lord, that we're a part of the problem. Lord, we pray for our black brothers and sisters whose cries for justice have been long and loud but we have not listened, and the world has not changed, and things have not gotten better. And so it is that we still see black men lying in the street, dead at the hands of the police. And we see scenes in our streets, oh God, that we never thought we would see in America. And so we pray, oh God, First, that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to listen. Lord, help us to hear what's going on. And Lord, give us wisdom that we may be the change we seek. Lord, peace doesn't just happen. Peace is made. And you call your children to be peacemakers. So, oh God, give us the courage and the wisdom to be peacemakers whether that means walking in the streets in protest or in the halls of government making our voice heard. Lord, we pray that through all that we are going through right now, our nation will become just and right. That it will be a nation for all and not just for some. Lord, we confess we have been complicit for more of us are in the some category we have benefited. And so we pray, Lord God, that you would help us to be our brother's keeper in these difficult days. And Lord, we continue to pray as well. And Lord, we thank you that the coronavirus seems to be abating. We're yellow now. The cases are going down. And we thank you for that. Even as, oh Lord, we mourn for our sister Masako, Cleanse. We pray for Joanne and for uh, Masako's family in Japan and for all of her friends here at Pensai. We thank you, Lord, for her joy and for her spirit, Lord, for the way that she cared for your creation. And we ask, Lord God, that you would comfort them. And that for all of those families who are grieving because they've lost, lost loved ones to the coronavirus, or Lord, whose grief is on hold because of the coronavirus, all the ways that that virus has hindered and diminished us. Lord, we pray that you would comfort us and sustain us. And again, Lord, give us and give our readers wisdom that we do not go back to business as usual in a way that lets this thing come back with a vengeance. Oh, Lord, help us to keep the faith and to be patient and to wait, even though we are tired of waiting. And Lord, in the meantime, there is another C in our community, cancer. And so we pray for Ron Chaluka as he begins his cancer treatment. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless him, that you would sustain his spirit. Lord, that you would help him to endure, that you would comfort Amanda and the family. Lord, it is such a shock to hear that word associated with those you love. So we pray, Lord God, that you would bless and keep Ron and Amanda and the family. And Lord, we pray for Linda Kime and for my family as she begins her treatment tomorrow. Lord, we pray that it would be a success. We pray, Lord, that the chemotherapy for both Linda and for Ron would do what it is meant to do, that it would kill the cancer. And Lord, that life could be new and good and whole again for both. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. You are mindful of us. You care for us, and you are with us always. 
in these difficult days. You are our hope. And for that, we give you our praise and thanks, praying as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy.